Hey everyone, and welcome to the Indie Corner Weekly Wrap-Up, the place where you can get all your Nintendo Indie news all within five minutes. That's right, you can get more Indie news than the time it takes you to order food at a restaurant. Let's start off with news in the eShop. Last week, the North American eShop saw the arrival of SteamWorld Dig and the fall for Wii U. In SteamWorld Dig, you'll be exploring the underground as you dig to find secrets, treasures, upgradables, and more. In the fall, you'll be exploring a futuristic world as an artificial intelligence in a high-tech combat suit struggling to save the suit's unconscious human occupant. As for the 3DS eShop, we saw the North American release of Azure Striker Gun Vault and Thorium Wars Attack of the Sky Fighter. Azure Striker Gun Vault takes on the best aspects of Japanese 16-bit classics and updates them with new play mechanics and slick graphics. In Thorium Wars, you'll be piloting one of three starfighters across alien planets to protect Earth in this futuristic 3D aerial shooter. And finally, we got a release date and price for Teslagrad. You can pick this one up in the Wii U eShop September 11th for both North America and Europe at the price of $14.99. As a quick reminder, Teslagrad is a 2D puzzle platformer with action elements. Its key features is its use of magnetism and other electromagnetic powers to progress through the game. Additionally, the setting takes place in a long-abandoned Tesla tower. In indie development updates, we heard that Super World Karts has unveiled Pip from Adventures of Pip, as well as Shovel Knights as two new racers to their roster. Super World Karts is a classic 16-bit racer which will feature many indie characters from other games and is targeting a Wii U release. The project passed 50% of its funding goal and is still seeking support on Kickstarter. Continuing with indie crossovers, Varia Games and Graphite Labs have announced their collaboration between Hive Jump and Revan. Revan's Cyrek will be an NPC in Hive Jump that can be found in relic rooms and will unlock rewards. Additionally, some Hive Jump soldiers will also find themselves in Revan on planet Keras. We're not sure where they'll be located or what their purpose will be. That'll be up to players to discover. Our last development update is for Zaxa's Last Stand and its latest patch. Zenfa Productions has released a free update which will deliver two new maps to the game, boosting the total amount of content by over 30%. Additionally, the game has been tweaked to make the game more user-friendly. Now, while I don't have any new Kickstarters this week, there was a ton of new indie projects announced last week. Starting off our new indie game list, we have the Castle Game, developed by Neptune Interactive. This game is set in a medieval fantasy setting and will play similar to a tower defense game. The game will feature 15 different maps with 3 difficulty settings, online leaderboards, and achievements. You'll find everything you'd expect from a medieval game such as towers, walls, traps, archers, knights, sorceresses, etc. to fight off the hordes of evil. The game is currently set for a February 2015 release and heading to the Wii U. Next, there's High Strangeness by Midnight City coming to the Wii U. The game labels itself as 12-bit, mainly a pun from the game's unique game mechanic to switch between 8-bit and 16-bit graphic styles. The game will place you in the shoes of a boy who finds his home invaded by shadow villains. It's up to you to journey into a foreign world filled with evil and fight for peace throughout all universes. Our next title is Temple of Yogg by Chud Chud Industries, also coming to the Wii U. The game promises to highlight the uniqueness of the Wii U and what is possible with the second screen of the gamepad. This roguelike adventure will take you through procedurally generated dungeons and puzzles that span two screens. The main gameplay concept has a developing civilization sacrificing people for the sake of progress. Players will control the tributes and guide them through the realms of light and shadow. The game is expected to be completed in 2015. Following up is Gone Home by the Fulbright Company. This story-based adventure game is set in a house during the mid-90s when a woman discovers that her entire family has vanished. Several clues have been left behind for the woman to find the answer to her family's disappearance. It will be up to players to solve the mysteries and find the truth behind the suspicious disappearances. The game won the BAFTA 2013 award for Best Debut Title and nominated for Best Story. Now as for Nintendo Enthusiast exclusives, we had a few things hit the YouTube page and the main site. Myself, I had the chance to interview the team behind Nefarious last week. The interview covers more details as to the gameplay mechanics of the main character's power glove and how big a role the kidnapped princesses will play. Also, the team shared the challenges of redesigning boss fights where the players control the boss. Additionally, I released a video of my top 10 most anticipated Wii U indie titles coming out, so be sure to give it a look and let me know if you agree or disagree with my choices. 
Finally, Sean wrote up a review on the recently released title, The Fall. Sean praised the game for the solid graphics, voice acting, and excellent story, but lamented its overall length and the learning curve for controls. And that's all the Nintendo Indie News I have for you guys today on September 1st, 2014. Now, if you have any indie news of your own that's missing from the show, make sure to tweet it to me at Jason underscore Lapine, and I'll make sure to add it to my list and cover it next week. Remember, for more Nintendo indie news and coverage, keep it to NintendoEnthusiast.com. I'll see you guys next week.